Patriarch of Russian Orthodox Church blames liberal values for the Ukraine war. <laughs> um, on March 6th, during a Forgiveness Sunday sermon, Patriarch uh, Kirill, the head of the Russian Orthodox Church, hinted that pride parades may have played a role in the conflict that escalated into the invasion of Ukraine. Kirill implied that the expanding adoption of liberal Western values justified Putin's war. According to him, uh, the, <laughs> the war in Ukraine is a test of which side of God humanity will be on. He also described the war as a conflict between the supporters of gay pride parades, including the Western governments and Russia. Quote, in order to join the club of those countries, you have to go, <laughs> you have to have a gay pride parade, he said. Kirill accused Ukraine of warming up to the Western powers by allowing LGBT communities in gay pride parades to flourish. He claimed that, quote, if humanity accepts that sin is a variation of human behavior, the human civilization will end there. He seemed to imply that Putin is protecting the values of the Russian-speaking and heavily contested Donbass region in eastern Ukraine, stating, quote, in Donbass, there is a rejection, a fundamental rejection of those so-called values that are offered today by those who claim world power. <laughs> Kirill explained, quote, we know that if people or countries reject these demands, they are not a part of that world. They become strangers to it. His comments have led to a schism within several Russian Orthodox communities and public calls for him to amend his statements. Yeah, this is why the, the Ukraine-Russia war has turned into conservative versus liberal values global side. Like you see, you know, a lot of right-leaning people just taking the side of Putin on this because they think that this is more about Russia and Ukraine. This is about two different value system. Like Ukraine has become the stage for, you know, the, the fight between good and evil and what they consider to be good is traditional family values. Right. And against this degeneracy and, um this crime against nature itself and all things good and all things wholesome and all things that makes a society whole like the, you know the father and the mother and you know the traditional gender roles and all of that by the way this guy looks like a chess piece doesn't he <laughs> what did you just say to me? Does it, <laughs> it like I always thought like the bishops and the chess piece do, like I didn't I like why do they look like, how how is this a bishop? Right? It doesn't look anything like a bishop. Now I realize that the, apparently the bishops and the chess piece they're like ultra orthodox bishops. <laughs> Because that's what they, because he looks exactly like one of those chess pieces. <laughs> so. oh, Dolly's in, yes, he does look like a chess piece. <laughs> oh my God. I'm not oh wrong. Oh my gosh. Yeah, this, this whole, what you were saying about this contention of it, it in some ways, it's a reflection, or you, people are put, maybe, it, do you think it's a reflection of, or people are just imposing the cultural, the culture war narrative onto this conflict? Because what you were saying about, you know, seeing it as these val values of tradition um, versus like mo like modern degeneracy is um, that there are a lot of right leaning people in the U S who side with Russia because they think that it is a better reflection of their values than the United States. Like there was this woman, I think she's like running for Congress who was saying like, yeah, you know, he's for Christian nationalism. Like he's against abortion. He's against, you know, this LGBT agenda, blah, blah, blah. And she was openly praising Putin for these things. And I was like, Oh girl. <laughs> What do you think? 
Do you think there is an aspect of it this that is genuinely about culture war, or is that just something that because the culture war is a topic that is discussed, you know, in society, that this is just being imposed onto this conflict? Uh, no, I think it's, it's it is about the culture war because because I think COVID broke Putin's brain, right? Because, <laughs> maybe like that. Maybe. No, yeah, I think he thinks he genuinely thinks this is a battle between light and darkness. You know how I know this? Oh boy! Oh, why? Be why? No, because he said so, right? <laughs> no, he literally said so. Like he comes and he thinks that. Okay, so he. Okay, so I don't know if if you know much about KGB agents, okay? But they they be a bunch of conspiracy theorists, right? Oh no, they're they really paranoid they're extremely paranoid okay so putin is also an ex kgb actually he's not an ex kgb agent because he claims that once you are a kgb agent you will always be a kgb agent so he's still a kgb agent okay that's what he said right but these people think like i don't know if they if they if you're a kgb agent okay and you open your fridge and you want milk and you ran out of milk the world is conspiring against you to make sure you don't get milk this morning okay that's how it works okay? they're trying to like... deprive me of calcium because they want me to be weak <laughs> <laughs> so the US can take over. yeah 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 so these are people like seriously these people think like there's like ears in every goddamn wall and the the most minor things is like a ch it's chess move between the great powers right that's what they think right they're like and you know, Putin hates the fact that he thinks the natural order of things is to, for the world to have two great powers, right? He doesn't even want, like, for example, the United States to fall. He wants, like, he likes the idea of having, he thinks, like, everything would be in balance if there's two competing world powers just, like, correcting each other, right? So he, like, you know how bad situations were during the Cold War? Putin thinks that was fantastic, <laughs> right? He, he just thinks like, he thinks the world is going out of balance because there's one world power and there's not another world power to keep this other world power in check, right? And he thinks like, if, like it's not just like politics that is out of order because of this imbalance. He thinks nature is now being threatened, like everything good and natural, like all this weird degeneracy that is coming out of West is potentially because of not having any resistance to whatever values is coming out of this other world power, right? Like because if it was, you could put it, you could have a, you could, it would be limited to what it, what ridiculousness it could introduce to the world, right? So he's he seems he's he wants to make Russia back to being the superpower that it was, not just because of Mother Russia, okay, but because of the what makes you know for humanity itself apparently okay for the sake of putting nature back in order right so that these people apparently according to putin don't come and suggest that men could be women women could be men you know again this is not my and like put and again these are putin's like i'm not this is not my i'm, I'm not microanalyzing i'm not like a psychologist that is uh, this, these are his words okay i'm like you know so he like he wants he thinks he's the great corrector right and by the way for you atheists out there uh, who think like putin atheist right-leaning people who think athe uh, putin is based he thinks religion has a major role to play to um to fight against any any religion he doesn't even care right he thinks traditional religious values are a guardian for these values for these conservative values right because he wants to fight this interesting. fight interesting yeah on an individual I mean, he would be kind yeah. of correct right mm -hmm. yeah he would be that's why he defends religion like that's why he's not like a uh, one of the things he disagrees with communism he he wants to use religion as a tool to fight against these western values on an individual basis, not just on a geopolitical basis. He thinks religion is the only, he thinks religion is the way to go into people's households and, you know, because politics, you, you know, politics cannot do that. Yeah. 
So he's mm -hmm. a defender of religious traditional religious religions as well. Um, yeah. So he he you know this is not they literally think they are th these liberal values are a force of are forces of darkness. They call he calls them that. So yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the dark side. By the way, this is the dark side. We are so apparently... yeah. We're like, holy <laughs> crap, man. <laughs> right. All right. This is why he needs to be crushed. By the way. Yeah. Hmm. Well, man, this makes me want to me want to ask you oh. other questions about this issue right now, but it's off topic from the news story. You, just one more thing, though. The reason why I think COVID broke his uh, broke him because he's already like that. He's like already prone to like conspiracies and stuff. But Russia during the pandemic, they went through. Um, they acted like this is not a thing. Okay, this is why they had one of the worst like cases. Like it spread everywhere because they didn't lock down. They didn't. They were really bad at it. And relative to other countries, like it was spreading like more than every, more than most other countries. It was horrible. Russia was, this was a huge blow to Russian to Russian people. Okay, but even though to Russian people they were like not locking down and just letting the Russian people uh, pay the heavy price for it, Putin himself treated it like a plague individually. I don't know if you know this. So they were publicly they were they were acting like this is nothing, but privately Putin, he isolated himself. He was so paranoid. I think some people argue that's the whole reason behind these long tables, you know, that he he has when he meets with people. He's extreme. Like I maybe like I don't know if he's a germaphobe or it's because of the pandemic that he's now a lot more sensitive, but he has gone through two years of isolation okay like not meeting with that many people except some people that are crazier than even him right like <laughs> no seriously like he no i originally, know <laughs> originally when putin came to power he was meeting with so, a diverse group of people and opinions including a lot of people who are more liberal minded and more in line with like opening to the world and you could see the effect that those people had on him on his policies and it was good but more and more, he's now his the circle of people who are around him are people who are crazier than even him. And he's actually among those people. He's the more rational thinker. Like he's like a he's the one that is like calming them the down. Moderate. They're, they're moderate compared to them. Right. But he's been isolating himself more and more, especially during the pandemic. And it might be again, I don't know about this, but some people experts are arguing that maybe all that separation has made him even more prone to conspiracy and also thinking of you know anyways over over overplaying his role or overseeing his role or his greatness and you know and what he can do and what this is all about right yeah so might be anyways do you want to read some you want to add anything do you say that he had the longest table ever <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah i'm so glad that the internet has as much of a collective fascination with putin's tables as i do <laughs> like i really <laughs> like get in there and like psychologically analyze the, like these freaking tables man or or the rooms where where he has his cabinets for television that the proportions of the rooms and where he's standing, what's going are, are just bonkers. Um, so I, yeah, it's something I, I definitely have a lot of interest in. <laughs> All right. You want to read any other comments before I bring up the next news? Um, <laughs> music guy is saying that he, he's compensating. No, I don't think Putin needs to compensate, but okay. <laughs> um, actually, he does. Yeah, but never mind. I won't talk about more of Putin's psychology today. Okay. Um, what? <laughs> You're just funny. <laughs> okay, okay. Hey, guys. If you're a fan of blasphemy and sexy Cali, you know, 
like me, then you need to be sure to subscribe to our newsletter. Link in the description below. Because if you subscribe, we will send you a free copy of our Blasphemous Art ebook. And let me tell you, it is the tastiest blasphemy that you can find anywhere available today. And we are so generous with our blasphemy that we continue to send you more blasphemy every week. So make sure to subscribe. Link in the description below.